today I will be painting this cute puppy. Looks like a golden doodle. Today I will be painting on Fabriano Artistico hot press paper. So this will be a little bit different for me. So the first thing I'm going to do is trace my or sketch or whatever, however you like to get this on the paper. Just make sure that the eyes specifically have all the details. You can see an eye has so many different layers to it. So you want to make sure that you're drawing the highlights, the midtones, the darks. You want to make sure you're getting all of that in that drawing. So if that's not something you're comfortable with sketching, I do have a video up on YouTube about how to trace. Um, there's a couple different methods you can use to get it from photo onto your paper. So check that out. All right, so the first thing I need to do after sketching is I like to keep a sketchbook for this practice. So when I plan out, so as you can see, I've planned out paintings. I've picked my colors ahead of time. I've swatched colors out. So this is for today. I'm going to go ahead and choose my colors. I'm working from this palette. So these, these are my dot card colors. So I'm looking at this cute puppy and I'm looking at my dot card and I'm thinking with a little bit of transparent yellow oxide to see if we can get that. Let's try. I think that that is going to be a good mix. And this part is not as important as getting your values right. So, I mean, you could pick purple for all I care. As long as you get the values right, that's probably the most important. Now, for the eyes, I'm going to go with my Van Dyke Brown. The nose, I'm going to choose Payne's Gray and Neutral Tint. Okay. I think we've got our colors picked out. And I love this mixing palette, or this palette, I should just call it. So this is our neutral tint. Look how dark. I mean, it almost just looks black. And the reason I like that instead of just a plain black is because it's it still has interest. It's a mixture of colors, and it just creates more interest than a plain flat black. I'm going to grab my Payne's Gray there. Looks like I need a refill. Probably can't see that. Okay. So we will be starting with the eyes. I always, always, always start with the eyes first. Why? Well, if you get the eyes right, the rest of the painting flows. Um, the eyes are the most important part. Let's say you save the eyes for last. That's fine. But if you paint this whole painting and then you get to the eyes and they don't turn out right, you've just wasted all that time. So I like to get the eyes out of the way first. And they are my favorite part and they are the part I spend the most time and detail on. Okay, before I start painting, I want to make sure my lines are not too dark. So I'm going to take my kneaded eraser and just lighten it, especially the hair. I'm going to leave the eye detail. I don't want to lose that. Now, if you're following along, Keep in mind, I am using a different paper. I'm using a hot press paper. So your results may vary depending on the type of paper you are using and then the type of paints you're using. So if you decide to follow along, just keep in mind that your painting probably won't look exactly like mine and that's good, we want that. First things first, I am gonna use a tiny bit of transparent brown oxide in this eye because the light is obviously coming from this direction. So I've got a watery mix 
And I'm just starting on that little highlight on the iris. That's going to be the lightest part of the eye. And it's okay if I go over all of it. Because I'm going to be putting, that is my lightest value. That is my lightest shade. And the rest is going to be darker and darker as we go on. I am going to leave the highlight. And if you look at this picture, I want to show you what I'm talking about. Okay. The highlight in the eye is actually not white. It's blue. And that is where the King's Royal Blue comes into play. So I know I didn't put that in my sketchbook, but I'm going to keep that in mind that I'm going to be using King's Royal Blue for the highlight. And then another thing I want to mention right now, this part is our nice chocolatey brown. You see that? Um, and then it just progresses. It gets dark, really dark here. And then you have the eyelash shadow. I love that, by the way. And then it's really dark here in the center. I'm not sure what that is a reflection of. I was trying to figure out what that puppy's got reflected in its eyes. A lot of times you can see the person who's taking the photo, which is really fun. Okay. I'm going to let that dry before I start on my next layer. I think one of the biggest mistakes that new watercolor artists make is not letting one part dry before starting in on another. So for example, if this was still pretty wet and I'm going to go ahead and put my King's Royal Blue on here, I'm going to dabble it in and then I'm just going to take some clean water and spread that around. But if that was, if this brown part was still wet, we're going to experience that spreading and that, that blue is going to leak into the brown. We don't want that. So it's really important to wait for that to dry. And I see like some darker areas here. I'm gonna go ahead and add those. Looks like clouds. Okay. Now I'm looking at the white part of the eye. The white part of the eye is very, very rarely white. It's usually got some color to it. And as I look at this, I am seeing more of that blue color. So I'm going to go ahead and put here just a really white, sorry, a really light washy blue. And as it gets towards the center, it gets more white. We're going to let that dry, or if you need to cheat, you can use your dryer. Okay, now I'm going in with my Van Dyke Brown. Technically, I can do my neutral tint here.
You'll want to keep glancing back and forth at your reference photo. Okay, I went ahead and added the um, reference photo to the screen for you. And I'm going to continue working on that darkest part. I've mixed a little bit of neutral tint and Van Dyke Brown to make basically a black. I'm going to switch to a smaller brush as well. So I have been working with a size six silver black velvet, but I feel like it would be more appropriate right now to use something similar to a size two. I really like these silver black velvet brushes. Okay, now on the lower, the lines I just made, I'm taking some clean water and I'm going to feather that out because there is a part on the eye under the eye, I should say. Okay. All right, the eye is starting to come to life. I just need to darken the pupil. I'm going to go ahead and use transparent brown oxide mixed with some Van Dyke brown. And I'm going to go ahead and darken that. I'm keeping in mind that some of this other stuff is still wet. All right, I'm going to lift. I've got just a damp brush and I don't want that to be so dark. So I'm just going to lift and I'm struggling because that center part is leaking. And I think I'm going to leave it like that for now. I'm liking it. Now I'm going to take some more of that blue and mix it with a little Payne's Gray. And I'm going to fill in some of that white. There we go. All right. I wanted to mention to you that I like to try to let my painting dry as naturally as possible. Um, I just feel like I like the granulation better. It just feels more natural, but sometimes I need to use a tool 
Um, and for the sake of this video, I'm going to go ahead and use a, I think this is just like a heat, a craft heat tool. Yep. Heat tool. You can use a blow dryer for hair, but it does put out a little more power. So you'll want to keep that in mind. Okay, I went ahead and added the um, reference photo to the screen for you. And I'm gonna continue working on that darkest part. I've mixed a little bit of neutral tint and Van Dyke Brown to make basically a black. I'm going to switch to a smaller brush as well. So I have been working with a size six silver black velvet, but I feel like it would be more appropriate right now to use something similar to a size two. I really like these silver black velvet brushes. Okay, now on the lower, the lines I just made, I'm taking some clean water and I'm gonna feather that out because there is a part on the eye. Under the eye, I should say. Alright, the eye is starting to come to life. I just need to darken the pupil. I'm going to go ahead and use transparent brown oxide mixed with some Van Dyke brown. And I'm going to go ahead and darken that. I'm keeping in mind that some of this other stuff is still wet. All right, I'm going to lift. I've got just a damp brush and I don't want that to be so dark. So I'm just going to lift and I'm struggling because that center part is leaking. And I think I'm going to leave it like that for now. I'm liking it. Now I'm going to take some more of that blue and mix it with a little Payne's Gray. I 
and I'm going to fill in some of that white. I wanted to mention to you that I like to try to let my painting dry as naturally as possible. Um, I just feel like I like the granulation better. It just feels more natural. But sometimes I need to use a tool. Um, and for the sake of this video, I'm going to go ahead and use a... I think this is just like a heat, a craft heat tool. Yep, heat tool. You can use a blow dryer for hair but it does put out a little more power, so you'll wanna keep that in mind. Okay, let's go ahead and move on to the next eye. Now, this eye is in shadow, so we're going to be going a little bit darker on this one. And I'm gonna start with my Van Dyke Brown. And I'm gonna go ahead right on in to this iris, the dark part of the eye. And I'm looking at my reference photo. I'm, I'm using a size 2. You do not need to use the exact same brushes that I'm using. They're just what I have found to be the most pleasant to use. I really enjoy these brushes. But I know people who absolutely do not like these brushes. It's totally up to personal preference. So try different brushes, see what you like, what works for you, and that's what you need to use. Okay, I'm gonna grab some neutral tint. I'm looking up here and this is really dark. This whole area here. We've got eyelashes going down. I love the eyelash reflections my favorite. Our friends just got a puppy that looks a lot like this one. And we got to hold it the other day. It only has three legs. He, I should say. So they named him Luke Skywalker. They are huge Star Wars fans. At least the dad is. And it's just perfect. Okay, switching back to Van Dyke. And I'm, I, I'm just looking back and forth at my reference photo to make sure I'm leaving those highlights where they need to be. I'm going to dry this before I do that dark center part. Now I've got my neutral tint on my brush and I'm going to do this center. Otherwise known as the pupil. This is the part of the pupil we can see because there's a highlight blocking the rest of the pupil. I think it helps to understand how things work, how light works, how light influences a photo. And for me, I come from a photography background. So that's something that I had to learn in photography and that has actually come into play quite a bit in my art. Something you will begin to notice as you paint animals is this part. I'm going to go back to this other eye. The part at the edge of the iris. The iris is the colored part of the eye. Um, the edge is always darker. Okay. I don't want to leave a hard edge on that. 
So I'm going to take just a clean, damp brush, and I'm going to do something that I call feathering. It's also known as softening. But I'm playing with that. And then I'm going to go over here to this eye and do the same. I'm taking my Van Dyke brown mixed with neutral tint. And I'm going to add that. Notice right here is a dark shadow. You know, this hot press paper is really good for these little details, but we'll see how I like it for the rest. I do like a little bit of texture. That's why I like the soft press because it allows me to do details. Um, but it still gives me a little texture. This paper is just so flat. I'm gonna take a little bit of color. I'm gonna take some of that transparent brown oxide and drop it in to both. Because these, these brown eyes need a little color. I think. I mean, you can technically make the eyes whatever color you want. I like that so much better. Time for the center part. We're gonna go back to our King's Royal Blue. You can use lavender, you can you can do really whatever. We just need like a really light sky blue. And if you look at this eye, it's lighter than the other one was as far as the blue goes. So I want to be cautious of that. And now I'm looking at the white part of the eye. And I'm going to take just some light washed out Payne's Gray. And I'm going to head in on the white part. Now this puppy's got some hair covering up um, some of this. And... That is okay. I know it looks weird right now, but when we add the fur, you'll see that the reason that that needs to happen. And if you feel like it's too dark, you can take a clean cloth and dab a little bit of that up. I'm fixing this because as I look at my reference photo, I'm just seeing that this needs to come down a little bit. There we go. Okay. Next, while we let those dry, we're going to work on the nose. So for the nose, we chose Payne's Gray. I really like Payne's Gray for noses. It's a, a nice gray, but it has a blue tint to it. And we're going to go in really thick to begin with. I'm taking my size 6 brush here. And I'm going to start on those darker parts down at the bottom of the nose. And I'm just going to outline them.
Um, if, you, if you look at the picture of the dog, you'll notice this is the darkest, darkest part of the nose. And we have a highlight there, and then it goes dark again here. I want to work kind of quickly because I don't want too hard of lines. And actually, if you look at the reference photo, this dog, its nose is out of focus. Okay, now I'm gonna take some clean water on my brush, just like a damp brush, and I'm gonna start playing with that and feathering it out. This will just be my first layer. And I'm gonna go ahead in that highlight area too. And I'm just gonna go ahead and fill in the whole nose with this light wash of gray. I'm noticing with this hot press paper that it dries really quickly and is leaving harsh lines. So that's something I'm going to personally be keeping in mind as I paint this, that I need to work quickly because of how fast this paper is drying. Now I'm going to take some more of that Payne's Gray and just start dropping it in. And noses are pebbly in texture. So I like to just dab, dabble. This nose is a little bit trickier than other noses I've done just because it is not in focus. So we just wanna give the idea of a nose. We don't want it to be the focal point. <clears throat> so I'm gonna go ahead and drop even more of that thick Payne's Gray in. And I'm also going to keep in mind the little nose highlight there. And it kind of gets dark up here. And then it... There we go. I'm going to... Uh, let's see here. I'm going to soften this right here just a little bit with some clean water on my brush and make sure we don't have any specks. Like I said, this paper, I'm not used to. It is drying really fast for me, but we'll make it work. I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit so you can see what I'm looking at. And I'm gonna go ahead and dry okay. it. So as I'm looking at this, and I'm looking at my reference image, I need to darken the nostrils. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab some Payne's Gray and maybe mix it with a little bit of neutral tint to darken that just a little bit. So I'm getting a really, really thick, deep, dark wash. And I am going to darken this part.
like I said, I'm looking at my reference photo constantly. Now I'm taking some clean water on my brush. I'm going to leave that alone. I'm going to go ahead and dry it. Okay, I'm going to leave the nose alone. Maybe I'll come back to it later. Sometimes if I get frustrated with a part, I'll just come back later. But something I'm looking at on this right eye is that I did not do the black under eye part. So I'm going to go ahead and take my neutral tint and I'm going to do right here and then all of this. I'm I, this is a really thin line I'm doing here. And I'm noticing it kind of goes out right here giving this sad puppy dog face. And then, okay. I'm going to take a really light wash of Van Dyke Brown. Like, let me show you what I mean by a really light wash. Okay, just a tip for you. Something that I like to do is get a piece of paper that's a scrap paper and just see if it's gonna to be too dark or not. So what I'm going for is the area under the dog's right eye where, where it's just kind of like this brown color, like brown eyeliner. It's very soft. So this is Van Dyke Brown. It's pretty washy and I'm feeling pretty good about that. So get yourself a piece of scrap paper and, and see what things look like before putting it on the paper. I'm also seeing it above the eye. Okay. And I'm gonna leave that. I might feather it out here just a little bit. Because if you look at the reference photo, you can kind of see there's some darkness right here feathering out. I'm going to grab a little more and drop it in there. Okay, so there's that one. And I'm going to go over to the other eye and do the same thing. Okay, I'm really liking that. I think it looks really good. Okay, so next thing I like to do is the ears. But this dog, this dog's ears are not so defined as others, but they are the darkest part of the fur. So I'm gonna go ahead and make my color that I'm going to use for the ear. And I like to switch to a larger brush for this. So maybe let's say you switch to a, that's a size two quill. 
Um, quills are a lot larger. Let's say maybe a size 12. So the reason I'm making my brushes larger for the rest of the dog is I want to be loose with the rest. The eyes and the nose, I like those to be super tight and detailed. But then when it comes to the fur, I want to be playful, light, loose, effortless. So I'm going to switch to a larger brush. Now we need to make our mixture. Whether you chose to go with yellow ochre or you chose to do burnt umber or you chose transparent brown oxide mixed with transparent yellow oxide, whatever color you decide to choose, you're going to go ahead and mix up that color. So I'm going to mix mine. I've actually got some burnt sienna, which is, that might be a good start. And mixing it with some transparent yellow oxide to kind of break, make it a little more orange. Then I'm going to test it and see what I think. I like it. Maybe a little more of the transparent yellow oxide. I like, I like what I'm seeing. So that's going to be my mixture. It's really important to make a big puddle of it because it really sucks to get halfway done painting your dog and have to stop and mix up more paint and then things start to dry. So just mix up a good amount. Okay, now I'm taking this darker mixture that I just made. See that? So that is um, burnt sienna and transparent yellow oxide. You can use whatever works for you. I've got my mixture up here uh, out of view and I'm going to go ahead and start on this darker ear over here. So I need to keep in mind that there's fur here that's lighter colored on the face and I'm just going to start putting it in. Just keep in mind where the hairs are on that are coming off the face. Don't be precious about this, please. And I'm going to go ahead and go make a line right here because I know that that's also dark. Okay. Okay. Now I'm going to take some water with my brush and I'm going to just start splashing it in. Don't be too precious about each little hair. You're giving the idea of hair. Okay, up here, we've got some little rogue hair. Something I like to do especially in areas where there's a highlight, is I drop in a little bit of water. Let me tilt my, there we go, that's better. Um, you can also lift, because I'm looking at this dog and it's very blonde up here. Oops, I got a little dark paint right there. I didn't mean to do that. Mistakes totally happen. And that's why we lift. You just take your brush, you you rinse it off and then you dry it off and you can go ahead and lift hairs out, lift certain areas. Just play with it and see what you like. Okay, I am going to drop in some water. I love cauliflowers on this part of the painting. Okay, I'm going to leave that air alone for a minute. And I am thinking this is a little orange or, or a little redder than I wanted. I wanted more of a blonde looking dog. So I'm going to add just a little bit of transparent yellow oxide to my mix and see how much blonder. Yeah, I like that better. Okay. Now on my drawing, I kind of cut out the ear over on this side. However, you can see it right here. Whoa, that was watery. 
You see how watery that mixture was? So I'm just gonna go ahead and put that ear in. Okay, I'm rinsing my brush. And right here where I added this, I need to feather that out so we don't get a harsh line. So I cleaned my brush, it's just damp. And I'm just gonna play with that line until it's a little bit softer. And this paper is so different. It's reacting so much different than I'm used to. And that's okay. what I like about lost and found lines. Okay, so now this part of the dog is lighter. I'm just using some dirty water. I'm gonna do one layer. This dog is so cute. I'm gonna add a little bit of color between here. So the way that we're going to show depth and make this 3D is through darks, midtones, and lights. This is really important on a dog, especially a dog that has like short fur because you can see it much more prominently. So around the eye, I'm seeing a dark so I'm going to fill that in with really thick, dark paint. I'm going to do the same over here. And like I said, color is not as important as your values. Okay. Now to soften some of that out, you just get water. And if you have too much water, it's going to bleed like crazy. All right. I am really happy with how this puppy's coming along. Okay, around the nose, there's darker. Around the eyes, there's darker. So here, under this eye, I'm making it a little darker. Here around the muzzle, it's a little darker. Something, a trick that I do is I squint my eyes at the reference photo. And what I'm looking for is the darkest areas. And then that's kind of what I'm mapping out. Now I'm just adding, like dropping in some darker paint to those wet areas. As watercolor dries, it lightens up significantly. Okay. 
Okay. I'm going to take some clean water and just start dabbling and playing here and here, here and there. Okay, it's really light right here. So I'm just going to do a light, light wash of that mixture that we made. And sometimes you have to lift. That's okay. I'm lifting out where the fur, the hair is right here. Be careful of the eye. And then around the nose, as you look at your reference photo, you're going to notice that it's darker right around the nose. I'm going to go ahead and go all the way down here. Watch out for the nose. Go around it. Be careful. And then wetting the entire muzzle. And then now I'm going to go ahead and drop in just those darker areas around the nose. Here we go. And I might want to make it a little bit darker, but the cool part about watercolor is if it's not dark enough, let it dry, and then you can go back in and add another layer. You don't want to try to go too dark too soon. And if it's if you've already put down paint and it's not the way you like it, let it dry. Because if you keep fiddling with it, it's not going to look natural. I've had to learn that through hard experience. Okay. I'm leaving a light area right here on the outside of the muzzle because there is a highlight there. And if I've lost anything, I can lift it out. don't want to lose those highlights, do we? I'm going to make a mix for here. There's like this cute little eyebrow thing. So I took some of the Van Dyke Brown and just added it to my mixture for these really dark areas here. I'm just trying to see, hmm, where does it end? We've got like these little swirls here. I'm not going to leave those lines. I'm going to go in and soften. I'm just going to kiss them with my damp brush. Just kissing them. Because I don't want harsh lines. My goal with watercolor is always to make it look like the watercolor was allowed to do what it wanted. But that I was there partnering with it. And if you have to squint at your painting to see if have I preserved the lights and the darks, what do I need to lift? What doesn't look quite right? But like I said, we don't want to play too much and lose that natural look that we like. 
So I'm actually going to go up here on the head a little bit. And just kind of play around. This is mostly dry. And I'm going to go ahead and add some speckles, some splatters. We'll do more of that here in a little bit. But I need to add some darker color here. And it is still wet, as you can see. Almost completely dry, but not quite. Still a little damp in some spots. And I'm just adding what I can as I go. And I want to define the muzzle. You can bring the muzzle forward and make it more 3D by adding darks around it. It's cutie. Such a cutie. Okay. Um, now down here on the lower, uh, the lower jaw, I'm just, really that's just dirty water that I'm going to add to. I'm noticing you can almost see the lip right here and it's kind of a gray color, but I'm gonna wait until this is dry. I just realized I need to soften this out. And if you'll notice, I'm being incredibly gentle I, uh, like I said, I don't want this to look too contrived. And then the rest of the, the body is such a light color. I'm actually taking kind of dirty water down. And I'm just going to spread that. Okay. I'm going to let that dry. Then we'll go in and put a little darkness under the nose. We'll add that little lip hint and we'll darken some of the chin. So let me go ahead and dry this. So this might seem counterintuitive, but we're going to take our little size six. I know we just dried it, but now we're going to wet it. Not a ton of water, just damp. We're going to 
gonna take a little bit of Van Dyke. Just like that. And we're gonna dab it in. And if you look at it, it's like little tiny lines. And a good watercolor practice is to go with the lines, like whatever direction the line is going, it's a good idea to paint in that direction. But I'm just putting the tiniest, tiniest hint of this. Don't know that I want actual lines. Maybe hints of lines. I'm making some pretty harsh lines right now. And it's almost like a little mustache. Okay, I'm gonna clean my brush. And I'm just gonna take it and kinda tease. just to darken that a little, you see? Now I'm gonna take some neutral tint and make just a little lip right here. We just see like a hint of a lip through all that fur. I'm gonna make it really light and I'm gonna take my brush with clean water and I'm gonna just play with that. I'm being gentle on all of what I'm doing I have a very light hand, and I think that's sometimes people's frustration is, I think they try to go in with, with too heavy a hand. And then their painting looks cartoony or like, too like you're trying too hard. And that was the issue that I had for years. Is it just, oh, it just felt like, why does it look so contrived? I'm just gonna add a little more. We're just giving the idea of a lip. Okay. I'm noticing on the chin, right about here, we've got some dark areas. These are important. This is how we define where things are. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that, and I'm keeping in mind that there's hairs coming off of that. All of this comes with just practice. If this is something you're planning on doing, say for clients, and you're painting people's dogs, um, especially if that pet has passed on, I mean, if you've ever had a pet, you know your dog, you know their face, you know all their little quirks and their little spots and their little imperfections and their, you know, you just know them so well. So it's really important to accurately depict those things that make it unique. I mean, I'm looking at the reference photo and this dog actually has white on its chin and that's not something that I really left in there. I could put a little bit of white gouache, but I could have left it lighter right there and I didn't. And it's okay because this is not someone's dog. This is just something that I'm doing to teach, but I wanted to point that out. And it's okay in some areas to give the idea of hair.
just be gentle with that. And then down here on the body, I drew the lines where it's darkest. This dog has the cutest curls. I think it's a golden doodle. I think I already said that. But that's one thing I love about golden doodles is like all these little dark curls. So I'm going to give the idea of curls. Then I'm going to go back in with clean water on my brush and I'm going to dab at it. I'm going to grab a little more paint here. Right here under the chin, you can make it darker too, and that will give the idea of it being underneath. Excuse me. I feel like I've kind of lost my ear here. So I'm gonna put it back. All right. You just, this paper, man, it dries really fast. I'm used to having a little more time. But it's fun to learn new papers and try new things. I have used hot press before. This is not my first time, but Oh, there's a hair. I've never had it dry this fast. It is kind of warm in my studio, though. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and make another I ran out of mixture. And I'm going to take a different size, maybe a little bigger of a brush. And take this little quill that I've got and I want to do a little bit of splatters so I'm gonna make a pretty wet mixture and if you want to cover the face for this part you totally can so I'm going to use this maybe we'll turn it over and I'm just taking a pencil and my brush to make a little more mixture. The more water, the bigger the splotch the spots are gonna be. And then you can even take some just plain water. And do that. And then, you know, play around if you want to do a little bit more. I could see myself maybe taking some burnt umber. Where's my burnt umber at on my palette? Okay. Take some burnt umber. And maybe like play with these hairs. And then soften. It's almost like you're blurring the lines. In fact, that is what you're doing. So you put the lines down. It's an alternative to working wet on wet. I feel like I have more control when I work dry on or wet on dry and then fade the lines out. But there's so many different ways of doing it. So I'm going to take my size six 
with a little bit of burnt umber mixture. And I am going to go ahead and darken just a little bit more around the eyes here. So look at your picture, look at your reference and see what needs to be darkened. Keep working. Add a little more dark here. I just added those hairs that are covering the eye. I'm actually quite liking it. Where else needs darkened? Here and here. So this is just the layering process. We're just going to keep darkening gently. Some areas need a couple layers before they're satisfactory. That is one thing you'll notice about watercolor is that you got to keep going back in because it lightens up significantly. That's okay. That's why we like it. There is a certain magic about watercolor that I just oh, keeps me coming back every time. I could actually see myself using hot press, honestly. I could see this being a thing for hot, for pet portraits. Okay, I kind of feel like up here on the head I need to darken a little bit. So I'm gonna grab some burnt umber, I'm gonna grab something. I'm going in on dry paper. This scares some people. So if this isn't something you want to do, then don't. But I just need to add some hairs. Just sort of variation. I feel like it was too boring. Now I'm taking some clean water and I'm dabbling. There's something that is called lost and found lines. I like the lost and found edges. That's kind of what I'm going for. It gives the idea of lines, but not quite. That was more of a burnt sienna that I just put in. But I'm liking like a Van Dyke Brown mixed with the burnt sienna because it's a little more neutral. That's what this is that I'm using. So, squint your eyes at your reference, look for the dark areas that you need to darken, and just kind of play.
And then you got to know when to quit because if you keep going for too long, it's going to start looking forced. And sit back and look at it. Walk away. Go do something. Whatever you need to do. Give yourself a little break. And then come back and look at it with fresh eyes. I'm just looking at this muzzle area. If you squint at it, it really helps. I'm just given the idea of a muzzle here. If you want to bring something forward, you have to do a little bit darker around it to push it forward, if that makes sense. See, like as I'm darkening around the chin, the chin kind of pops out a little bit more. And that's what we want. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and dry it. Okay, we're not quite there yet. I was just looking at the reference and I wanna darken up quite a bit around the eyes. So I'm going to take my neutral tint. This happens to me every time. I usually have to go back in and darken the eyes. I don't know what it is, but. I'm just going to darken this up. And define those eyes a little bit more. So anything dark on the eyes, I'm just darkening it up. This sweet little pup looks like it has makeup on almost. Like I said, I've got my neutral tint. Something I noticed on this dog is there's a really light pinkish line right here. And you don't have to do it if you don't want. But I'm going to go ahead and do it. This inner eye is always pinkish.
This baby has the deepest, darkest eyes, and I really want to represent that. And so I'm just darkening. And we kind of lost the uh, the dark under eye a little bit, didn't we? So I've got my Van Dyke brown and I'm just going back in and getting that back. It happens. There, I like that. That's much better. Okay, if we really wanted to, we could probably do one more layer and darken everything. But I think I might want to just leave it alone. Because the more layers we do, the more, like I said, the more contrived this baby's going to look. One thing I do want to do is right here, I'm putting some clean water down. And I'm going to take some burnt umber. And bring that. In a little more. And then clean water. To spread it out. It just looked kind of weird to me. Okay, I'm gonna put a layer of water on this ear. And I'm gonna grab some burnt umber. And I'm gonna go ahead and do a little bit of darkening. drop in clean water like this to give us back that natural look that we're going for okay I think she's dry now let's do a satisfying tape peel. So 
So this paper is properly stretched using gum paper tape, but I always tape to create that little white border that I love. Not necessary to do. Properly stretching is also not necessary. Um, but I do have a video about that and why I do it. So this is gummed paper tape. You cannot remove it. You would literally have to get it wet and then that would defeat the whole purpose. So I'm going to show you how I remove it. So I have an X-Acto blade. This big of one is not necessary. You can use an X-Acto knife. You can use a small one. Uh, but I just changed the blade out on this one. So. so I just get a ruler. I find the edge. And I very gently... Actually, that wasn't on the edge. I can actually eyeball this. I'm just eyeballing it. I can see where the gap is between the paper and the board. Oh, did you hear the crack? I love the crack. So as this comes off the board, listen. I think that was all the crack we were going to get. Sometimes it's way more satisfying. Awesome. Beautiful. I love, love how flat that is. Okay, get this stuff out of the way. I'm going to go ahead and take this over to my paper cutter and I'm going to get rid of the brown border and I'll be right back. Ta-da! I love it. I'm so happy with how that came out. There's only one thing left to do. If I could find a pen. Here's our puppy. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I hope you learned something. I would love for you to share your um, images with me that you painted. You can send me a message on my Instagram, Ashley Hawks Watercolor. Um, I would love to see what you painted. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments. I answer every comment. Um, I would love to help you. I also offer workshops and this is the kind of thing we do in my workshops. So if you would like to join a workshop, I will post the link in the description and you can choose a date. We do them on Wednesdays and Saturdays and um, I would love to have you there. So I hope you have an amazing day. Okay, love you. Bye. Bye.